Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to introduce the concept of complex fractions. And complex fractions are simply an expression having a fraction in the numerator, denominator, or both the numerator and the denominator. So I here I have two examples of complex fractions. We have 3 over x plus 1 all divided by 12 over x minus 1. So I've got a fraction in both the numerator and the denominator. Here's another example of a complex fraction. 2 minus 2 over x all divided by 6 plus, and this is a 4, I change that to 4 over y. And keep in mind this 2 here is 2 over 1 and the 6 is 6 over 1. So you can see I've got a couple of different terms here that are both fractions. This one's a little bit less complex. This one's a little more complex because I have two terms in the numerator and two terms, 6 and 4 over y, in the denominator. There are two different methods for simplifying complex fractions. Uh, the book will run through both methods. I'm going to show one method in this video. I'm also going to show another method that's not in the book, um, but you'll see why that the method I'm going to show you is pretty straightforward. Um, so our process for simplifying complex fractions is to determine the lowest common denominator of all the denominators in the entire complex fraction. So in this sample here, in this second one where I have 2 over 1 minus 2 over x, 6 over 1 plus 4 over y, my common denominator of all my denominators is xy. So x times y is the common denominator in all of those denominators. This one, the common denominator, I have two denominators. I have x plus 1 and x minus 1. So my common denominator in this one would be x plus 1, x minus 1. So that's one thing we want to do when simplifying complex fractions, is we want to determine the common denominator. And then our process is to multiply every term in the numerator and the denominator of the complex fraction by the LCD. Okay, This will cancel the denominators in the numerator, or my denominators in the numerator will both become 1 so we don't show that, so it's canceled. This will cancel the denominators in the denominator as well. The denominators in the denominator become 1. So now I won't have a complex fraction anymore. The beauty of this method, it gets rid of the complex fraction right away. You'll have a regular fraction in which you can simplify, add and subtract, combine like terms, simplify your numerator, and you do the same for the denominator do any factoring if necessary, and apply the fundamental property and cancel the complex, compl any common factors. So let's go ahead and do a couple samples. We'll simplify each complex fraction. So the first thing we want to do with 3 fourths minus 2 thirds all divided by 1 half plus 3 eighths, we don't want to add these or subtract these numbers and try and find that common den denominator, what we want to do is get the denominators to cancel. So let's take a look at our denominators. All of our denominators, 4, 3, 2, and 8, it appears, and we're just going to eyeball this, is our common denominator is 24. So the common denominator here is 24. So now that we know what that is, I'm going to multiply the I'm going to multiply the numerator by 24, or if you will, 24 over 1, which means I have to take this term 3 fourths and multiply it by 24 over 1, and then I'm going to multiply 2 thirds and multiply it by 24 over 1. Well, I have to do the same thing to the denominator. Okay, I, I multiply 
the complex fraction by 24 over 24, well, that's multiplied by 1. So I'm not changing its location on the number line. So I'm also going to multiply 1 half by 24 and 3 eighths by 24. And the reason I'm multiplying by 24 is because I know 4 is a factor of 24, so the 4 will cancel. 3 is a factor of 24, so the 3 will cancel. 2 is a factor of 24, so the 2 will cancel. And 8 is a factor of 24, so the 8 will cancel. So all my denominators are going to cancel. So let's go ahead and begin. 3 fourths times 24, so 3 times 24 over 4, well 24 over 4 is 6, and I end up with 18. And now I'm going to multiply 24 times 2 thirds. And we will see 24 is 8 times 3. So the 3's will cancel. And I'll be left with 2 times 8 or 16. And then in my denominator, 24 times 1 half is 12 and 24 times 3 eighths, so the eighths will cancel, because 24 is 8 times 3, so the eighths will simplify, and I'll be left with 3 times 3, or I'll be left with 3 times 3, or 9. So all my denominators became 1, 18 minus 16 is 2, 12 plus 9 is 21. That is fully simplified. My final answer is 2 21st. And I have simplified that complex fraction. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Now we see that our common denominator is y plus 2 times y minus 2, because this y squared minus 4 is a difference of two squares. It factors to y plus 2 times y minus 2. But something interesting is going on with this. I only have one denominator in the numerator and one denominator in the denominator. Let's take a look at this fraction as a division problem. This really is 5 over y plus 2 divided by negative 3 over y squared minus 4. Well, this is pretty simple. We did this in the last section, or we've done this recently. This is a multiplication problem. 5 over y plus 2 times, I'm going to factor y squared minus 4, y plus 2 times y minus 2 all over negative 3. Well, I can apply my fundamental property. I can cancel the y plus 2's. And I'm simply left with 5 times y minus 2 all over negative 3. So that one I didn't have to follow the process. I didn't have to multiply by the common denominator. I could just flip the denominator, multiply it by the numerator, and I'm all set. So I've multiplied by the reciprocal. Let's do one that's a little more challenging. Let's go back to our sample problem at the beginning. And let's take a look at our complex fraction here. 2 minus 2 over x, all divided by 6 plus 4 over y. Now this one, because I've got two terms, in the denominator, two terms in the numerator, I can't just flip this denominator and multiply. This one, I only have one term in the denominator, one term in the numerator. So this one I could flip. I could do like that last sample problem, but not on this one. So we'll do this one again. And let's follow our process. So the common denominator of all the denominators in the complex fraction is xy. So I have to multiply the numerator by x times y and the denominator times x times y. So I'll go ahead and multiply the first term by xy. 
Well, nothing's going to cancel there, so I get 2xy. I'm going to multiply the second term by xy. Now the x's are going to cancel, and I'm left with minus 2y. All divided by, and I'm going to do the same process in the denominator. I'm going to multiply 6 by xy. Well, 6 over 1, nothing's going to cancel. I get 6xy. And then I have to multiply this term by xy. So I'm multiplying only the numerators here because this is xy over 1. So the y's will cancel. And I'll be left with plus 4x. So now my complex fraction is gone. I have a, a normal fraction. All my denominators are 1. So there's no like terms to combine, but I can factor out 2y from the numerator. So I have 2y times x minus 1. And then the denominator I can factor out 2x, and I'm left with y plus 2. And I still have a common factor here of 2, so my 2's cancel, and my final answer is y times x minus 1 over x times y plus 2. My final answer. So there's an introduction to complex fractions. And we will see you in class.